This city is known for having the oldest university in Argentina. But learning schmerning, what are their sports venues like? Let's check out the stadiums and arenas of Córdoba, Argentina. We start off with the Estadio Mario Alberto Kempes, which happens to be the largest stadium in the city. For that reason, it not only occasionally hosts the Argentina national team, but all the big clubs in town play here when a large crowd is expected, despite the fact that it's not a football-specific stadium, unlike their own home grounds. It was built just prior to the 1978 World Cup, where it hosted some matches. As you can see here, the design was different then, but it's still recognisable. Mario Kempes, whom the stadium is named after, was actually the top goalscorer at that event. He bagged six of them. It was only named after him in 2010 though. It was previously simply known as Estadio de Córdoba. I think being the top goalscorer in a home world cup definitely warrants having a stadium named after you. Certainly more so than being the president of the country. Ooh. Estadio Presidente Perón. As you may know, this is not the only stadium named after Presidente Perón. It is not even the largest one. Nor the most famous, nor the best equipped. There's not a proper seat in the house. But it is the reddest Estadio Presidente Perón. I'll give it that. And some say that the redness of a stadium is really the most important feature. Another distinguishing aspect is the gradient of the main stand, which is incredibly steep. I bet that many a beer has been spilt in spectacular fashion walking down those steps. It does make for a pretty good view though. The people look like blades of grass from up here. Orfeo Superdomo is the largest indoor arena in the city, although there's a catch. After just 18 years of use, it was closed in 2020. I know what you're thinking, and yes, it was due to the pandemic. Good detective work. In fact, it was later used as a vaccination center. Hopefully it gets back up and running soon, because the next largest arena in the city can only hold 2,000 spectators. And that's not even enough for a Hooli Dooley's concert. I don't know if the Hooli Dooley's are known outside of Australia, but they were a death metal band known for their disturbingly graphic lyrics. La Boutique is officially known as Estadio Francisco Cabasas, but I like La Boutique. What I like even more than the name is the eye-catching design of the main stand's facade, which very much does suit the La Boutique nickname. Even if you disregard the painting, it has a bit of an art deco look to it, which is almost always a good thing. Unfortunately, the first team plays most of their games at Estadio Mario Alberto Kempes. La Boutique is more often used by the reserve team. I say unfortunately, but that does obviously mean that the first team are attracting large crowds. Too big for a boutique stadium like La Boutique. So that's good for them. Perhaps La Boutique could be expanded in the future. But then they'd have to change the name to La Department Store. Which doesn't have quite the same ring to it. Estadio Miguel Sancho Opened in 1948. Shortly after Argentina was inundated with a ton of German and Austrian immigrants for some reason. Judging by this picture of the stadium that was taken shortly after it opened, the Germans did not bring their camera technology with them. That wasn't even a Japanese camera. Twas not a Nikon that is old, but a Yukon that is gold. Potato. Potato. The design Potato. has remained relatively unchanged since those times. Potato. Maybe a slight increase in Potato. capacity, and it's in colour now, Potato. of course. There's also a lot more advertising about the place, as is the way of the modern day. But yeah, it might be rudimentary, but it's certainly a cosy little ground. You can't deny that. El Gigante de Alberti, officially known as Estadio Julio Cesar Viagra, named after a club legend who sadly ended his own life. In Belgrano's formative years, they didn't have a stadium of their own, which is often the case. The club finally realized their dream of owning their own home in 1929. However, the occasion was not quite as joyous as the club would have hoped for, because they lost the match 6-1. To be fair to them, they weren't expecting to be playing a game of tennis. So they weren't prepared, oh no, it was a football game. Well. The club is nicknamed the Sky Blues, and fittingly, they play at a Sky Blue Stadium. You can even contrast it with a blue sky back there. Yep, they are both blue. And those were the stadiums of Córdoba. It was football heavy, as you may expect. As for my favourite, I have to go with La Boutique. 
which is unique, almost antique, definitely chic, with a sense of mystique. Far from being bleak, it may well be the peak. It's not made of teak, but it's certainly on fleek. Thanks for watching, have a good one.